All right, let's just test that this audio is going. Okay. Chuck that in there. Hey Mark, just testing the audio. Hi Sugar Hello. Honey. All right, so it's all working. Excellent, let me just check we've got the right angle. Hey fam, how you doing? Welcome everyone. Sugar Honey, hello, hey Hitman, how are you? Let me just check that this is right. We could probably, hey. we could probably even drop that down a notch or zoom in, couldn't we? Let's get this camera right. Just to give you an idea of where we are, check this out fam, that is the lovely Southern Ocean. What a beautiful picturesque view, look at that. Okay, that is one of the most dangerous oceans out there, totally different to the Indian Ocean we normally fish. All right, so what it is, this is the mouth of the river where it comes in. And what we're doing is we're just fishing this tide line that's in here. See how the tide's trying to come in through those waves there? Right, so let's just bring this back a notch. Hello, fish and hunt outdoors. How are you, mate? Let me just, uh, there's so much seaweed here. All right, there we are. How are you, fish and hunt? Welcome, pal. Okay, well, let me just get that this is right, okay. That's good. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, everyone. Uh, apologies for not starting earlier. I was going to take us all out uh, on a fly fishing trip in the boat today, but my friend is uh, working this morning. Gavin Chapman, how are you bud? Welcome mate. Uh, friend, that friend of mine that was going to take us out is actually working this morning. Work's important, so that's what pays the bills, you know. So uh, we'll be going out this afternoon, probably about, uh, I would say, 3.30, 4 o'clock. So what we're doing today is we are back at the spot that we fished yesterday. We're going to try for whiting again. And then if worse comes to worse, what we will do is um, if there's a change to the uh, schedule today with the um, boating stream, right, we'll just uh, head back out to that bridge that I fished yesterday. I was actually going to go there this morning, but I thought, nah, I better try and come down here and uh, see if we could get some whiting. Hey Mark, how are you going? No, we handed the boat back in June as part of the agreement, Mark. So uh, unfortunately with COVID, there's no supply. So, you know, I don't know if we'll get another one, but we'll just keep producing content and uh, just work it from there, you know. Um, yeah, it's pretty drastic in WA. Because of the lockdown, it's affected supplies of lots of things. So I don't know how long it's going to take for things over here to improve, but until then, we just keep going, you know. So, uh, and a big shout out to our sponsors, Millard Marine, Qualia Reels, and also Rode Microphones. Okay, if you go to the Qualia Reels website and type in Australis at checkout, you'll get 10% off any of their reels in the shop. Okay, and then as well as that, if you want to get serious about your uh, content, if you're a streamer or aspiring to stream on any platform, do yourself a favour and get Rode microphones. As soon as we started using... Um... Oh, thanks Fish and Hunt. Um, we sort of started... I think we sort of started on YouTube probably about July. Um, I haven't really been um, hitting it properly. Just we've had a very long winter and obviously we've had um, a very late start to the season. So we're in November. This content that I'm doing in November, we should have been doing in September. But, you know, that's how it works and that's how nature works. And we just work in with the uh, environment and what we've got, you know. Hello, Culpable. How are you, my friend? So look, um, without further ado, what we will do is uh, let's just start a bit more fishing. We might use a few soft plastics today, so it's all pretty casual. Um, with these tidal rivers and that sort of stuff, you've got to be able to cast into the salt water and that sort of thing, which is why we're here. 
So we've got a little point that comes in here, then the um, ocean funnels in through here, and the river funnels in from this side. So what we have in here, we have a lot of swirl. So I don't know whether you can see this, but just over here we have this smooth water, right? You can just see it on top. It's quite glassy just in here. That's where the salt and the fresh are meeting as they're mixing initially. And then what'll happen is the salt water will push the fresh water back, okay? So let's get on with it. Oh no. Yeah, late crabbing season, mate. The crabbing season here starts on December the 1st, okay? And um, there's still a lot of really murky and dirty fresh water in the inlets and that sort of stuff, which is a bit of a concern. But hey, it is what it is. And hopefully we have a better crabbing season, if you know what I mean. So, you know, you can only worry about your own actions, mate. We can't control nature, although some people seem to think that we can, All right? Oh dear. Daz Dan, how are you buddy? So the other thing is too, um, we're going to start doing our bike riding streams in the mornings to promote uh, health and well-being. Okay, so we will be doing a lot more content and we have to start streaming every day fam, you know what I mean? Uh, with the YouTube uh, algorithm, you need to do something every day, otherwise it forgets about you like that. So yeah. <laughs> is it Terry I promise you that uh you know if we get partnered is it will be the first emote that I upload to uh the channel okay so I mean we should be we're on track too right so what I've done here I took those beads off yesterday I uh, don't know I'm going to go back to the traditional rig so what we've got is we've got a rig that's about I would say I'd say oh, a bit just over four foot long because this is a bit shallower um, I can make the rig a little bit longer because the line's gonna lay virtually flat anyway I don't have a 10 foot fishing rod I've got a six foot one piece I'm just going to test if we've got um, too much weed in the area and I'll do that without bait on there so yeah that's great we're straight on the spot already Right, and that is very shallow in there. I'm just going to bring this in right along the bottom just to see if there's any weed. About 30 feet down, there's a big embankment of weed, but I'm hoping with the salt coming in, this has pushed it all back. Okay, well... Okay, so our hooks have come up absolutely clean. That means we're in the right spot. All right, so let's put some bait on and see what's out there. <laughs> and people thank you very very much for your support remember it's free to watch the, the stream you subscribe for free okay i don't expect anything out of anyone and i really appreciate the fact you're giving up your time to watch right and uh yeah there's not going to be any silly alert sounds or anything like that all we're going to do is just chill out enjoy nature enjoy the environment hopefully get some fish uh, what we'll do is um, we'll probably fish till about I would say maybe 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock today I'll duck off and get some lunch then we're going to shoot off just as the tide drops off and comes back and do some rock fishing a bit further up I'll see if I can get some King George and um, big whiting off the reefs that are close to shore here then we'll come back for a bit of afternoon tea and then what we'll do in the afternoon we'll end up on the boat okay and then once we end up on the boat we'll be doing a little bit of soft plastic and a bit of fly fishing for black brim i'm actually going to try and use soft plastics today it's not something that i've sort of done a fair bit of and um, a good friend of mine uh, ross is going to take us out in his boat if he comes back from working time so all right let's get on with it and see how we go <laughs> hello Glas glasgow rebel welcome mate Look, I'll tell you what, you kind of miss some of them. I'll tell you what, sugar honey, you and Hitman and Culpable put your heads together. No, maybe I should reword that. I've got to remember who I'm dealing with. Sorry, don't take that the wrong way. Um, how about you have a think about it, right? And think about which ones 
we could play that wouldn't be too over the top because the last thing I want it to sound like is a circus, you know? I don't want to move and then something goes off, you know what I mean? And a lot of people have really enjoyed the fact that um, it's been pretty laid back and just turn on and stream, you know? So, um, yeah, let's put some bait on and let's see if we can get some fish. And thank you, people. We've already got 11 viewers in here. This is awesome. Greatly appreciated. Right. Meh. Oh, I forgot my scissors, you idiot. That's right, I got my cutter. Yeah, thanks, culpable. Yeah, the more clicks and the more comments and the more everything like that, the more um, interaction we'll have from YouTube. Ah, white bait. Yuck, yuck. Yeah, have a think about it, sugar honey, because I mean. Right. You know, I personally think too much of it detracts from streaming, you know. And I'm not here to try and suck anyone in, you know, I just want to stream. Rightio. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some coral prawns. We'll see how we go with that. Is it... <laughs> James, tidy your room. I'll tell you. All right, let's see what's out there, famo. Yesterday was a pretty good day. I think we caught and released about, what, 50 fish or whatever? But it's not about the numbers. We just had a good day. I hope you enjoyed that stream at that bridge yesterday. Um, watch out, Mr. or Mrs. Seagull, whichever one you are. Nice. Right on the edge. All right. You can tell that we're in an eddy here because it's holding bottom, believe it or not. And if it doesn't, we'll just get another sinker on there. In the last 20 minutes that we've been here... All right, first fish of the day, fam. Right, in the last 20 minutes that we've been setting up here, the water has gone from a discoloured brown colour to a really clear salty colour. So, first fish of the day, I think this is a whiting. I'm hoping that no one walks up here because they'll see it and everybody will start coming up here. Hey! <laughs> What we've got here is a double header of Western Australian herring fam, so these rigs do work. I'm just going to put these poor little buggers back. These are really quite juvenile. Oh, oh come on. There's actually, um, there's actually no um, minimum legal size for herring, but... Um, they do have like a bag limit, but I don't keep them when they're that size, they're tiny, see? All right, first fish of the day. Hey, Hank, how are you, buddy? Welcome, mate. All right, excellent. Ah, oh, we've got a couple of puppies coming up. Hello, puppies. A couple of border collie crosses on here, or are they black Labradors? Let's have a look. Now, if anyone asks if we caught fish, the answer is no, remember? All right, there's no fish here. All right, now, Terry, you need to keep a count of what we catch today. Hello, puppies. 
Morning. Hello, puppy. Hey, not interested. <laughs> and the moral to that story is, at least I don't attract dogs. Haha. <laughs> Culpable would probably disagree with that. But anyway, you know, that's just culp, isn't it? All right, let's go again. Uh, two herring, don't worry about Ty, just get the number. All right, let's go again. The reason why I thought it fought like a big whiting was because there were two of them on there. Now, what I've done here is, as soon as that sink has hit the water, I've turned my bail arm over by hand. Rightio. So we just had another bite then, and that was a different bite to the herring bite. That's better. That was a whiting, believe it or not. Have we got one on there, have we? Let's have a look. Now see how the water volume's starting to increase? No. We did have bites though. Righty, uh, let's go again. Okay, top hook, that's usually the herring. Yeah, Western Australian herring. Hank, they're a different one to the Atlantic herring. And is it the Adriatic herring? I can't remember. They're actually the most important food source and they're part of the biomass that virtually sustains the whole fishery with, um, I mean, we've used herring like that as baits for jewfish, snapper, all sorts of stuff, you know. There we go. All right. I'm going to drop my rod tip, okay, and have that right along the bottom. And then that way, if a fish hits, I can just lift it and set the hook, hopefully. No. What a beautiful day. Fresh air, close to the ocean. But the water continually changes all the time. You know, once it fills up with salt, it pushes the fresh out, you know. It's that weed, is it? Oh, that's interesting. We cast over here and our baits ended up over here. All right, we're just starting to get a bit of weed now. I'm going to cast a bit more to the right now and we might have to put another sinker on. Let's see what's happening. You can see where the salt water is. Now this has all changed to salt now. There's very little brackish water here, so we should get a lot more of the saltwater species. And it shouldn't be too long before the uh, whiting start coming in. And it's funny, we've cast over to the right hand side, we're holding bottom and the sink is not moving. Eight feet to that side where the swirl is and it gets dragged over there. Actually, there's a heap of bait fish activity just in here on the left. You can see where the water's coming through. So that's where the salt comes in, the fresh hits, and in the middle where it mixes, it looks like a bit of a washing machine, you know? Oh.
Now, is this a bit more weed? Is it? What's happening here? Why are we suddenly getting weed in this area? Great. I thought we had it right, fam, but anyway. At least the baits don't have weed. If the baits had weed, we wouldn't have any chance of catching fish. All right, let's go again. First cast was all right. Rightio, that's right on it now. Come on. Okay. So we've got our second fish of the day, Famo. Feels like another herring, I think. But there was a very tentative bite the first time, so it could have been a whiting that hit the first time and then maybe a herring that hit it afterwards. So let's have a look. Another little herring. They're quite feisty little customers, herring. Right, if an Australian, if this herring was the size of an Australian salmon, it'd fight like a marlin. Here you go, little fella, come on. All right. Yeah, beautiful little fish. That's how you can tell if it's a herring, it's got two black tips on the tail. Right, Righto, back you go, pal. See you, mate, no, that way. All right, so. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, Aussie Welsh? Not much, mate. We've just caught uh, three beautiful little herring. Okay. And uh, I'm going to put a little bit bigger on there. All right, we're on the spot again. Okay, that was a different bite. That's better. All right. Is it still on there? I might have dropped it, let's have a look. No, I did drop it, bugger. Now that was the bottom hook that got taken that time, fam, which was the big bait. And that's the problem if you use too big a bait. If you get fish that like really hone in on it, they'll just smash it off the hook. But I did that on the bottom hook to see if there was something out there a bit bigger than the herring. And that actually felt like a King George that it hit. So let's see if we can get one in there. I'm glad that we've got some white bait because now I can do our little white bait rig with the gangs and uh, try and chase some big trevally. You do get trevally off the rocks up here up to about six pound and they love nothing better than a little white bait getting retrieved through the water like a lure, you know? Let me just peel some prawn. Yeah, sorry James. I can't believe how popular that Baby Shark song is. Because um, I was thinking about it the other day and I thought, oh yeah, where did it originate from? And then I had a look at how many views it had at YouTube and I was absolutely gobsmacked. Right. 
Okay, we're right in the salt over there, Famo. Right, right in the salt. Yesterday I was over striking on the brim. You don't want to bring the rod back past your head, you just want to bump with the rod tip and get it, you know. Come on. Okay, now that was a different strike. I don't think that was a whiting or a herring. It's good that we're holding bottom too. So in the last 10 minutes, all this water's changed. That's all salt now. So it's pushed all the weed, I think. The weed that we're getting here is out of the ocean. A little bit of weed build up on the line there. We'll sort of just take that out. We've seen no dolphins this morning, so that's probably another reason why we're actually getting fish. Okay. Let's just get rid of this ribbon weed that's on here and see if we can get another one. I'm just gonna try something different. It looks like the current line's moved in a bit. So I'm just going to cast on the edge of this seam and hope that there's not too much weed there. <sighs> no, no good. Let's try again. Oh, don't do that. That would send the microphone flying. All right, bit longer presentation again. Right, we're not holding bottom fam, so I'm gonna need to change things up a bit, hang on. All right, we're just gonna put a, uh, we're just gonna put another sinker on here, so give me a second.
Don't you dare. Come on. Okay, so we're going to go with four ounces of lead now on here. Right, I'm just going to put two of these. Um, although, no, I have actually got a four ounce sinker in here. I'm organised today. Where is it? Let's have a look. Yeah, finding it's the other story. Hey there, Dan. How are you, mate? Thanks for coming in. How's Hull today, mate? Shiny as ever? Beautiful summer weather. All right. This will cast further now too. As it just exploded every single bait off that I had. <laughs> Hang on, let's bring this in. Oh, okay, so I've just figured out where the weed is. Right. Excellent. All right, let's get a little bit more prawn on here. Then see how we go. Wet and windy? Ah, it's good to see some things are constant. That's a better cast. We're right in amongst it now. There's a heap of water flowing through here as this tide comes in. Yep, covered in weed. I don't know why that is, but anyway. <sighs> Last time we were here, we had the kayak. So, let's just go in here for a second. I'm just gonna try to the left. Right, let's see what's down there. Hopefully not more weed, you know? That's a better bite. Rightio. Yeah, the water's changed a bit. Everything's moved over to the left here. So that's why I just cast a bit further down. What do we got here? <laughs> the world's smallest herring. <laughs> Come on, little fella. Oh, better wet my hands. Oh. Yeah, if you don't wet your hands when you handle fish, you remove their protective slime. There you go, bud. All right, so at least we know where the fish are now. So that's where we'll be casting to. All right. Uh, Dan, we're just fishing for more um, saltwater species. So in Western Australia, we have a fish known as a West Australian herring. The mouths of inlets, and things like that are where they usually are and um whoops and uh herring are actually a very important food source a lot of the uh upper apex fish in the ocean like uh jewfish mulloway australian salmon and that sort of stuff they eat west australian herring uh a few years ago i think the government bought the commercial licenses 
for the herring fishing. So what's happened is they aren't being fished as heavily as they were before. So we've had a, um, a good return of numbers. It's gonna take about three to five years, they say, for it to filter back through. But once the biomass of herring increases down the bottom, then the other fish that are further up the scale, Taylor, Australian salmon, mulloway, uh, snapper, jewfish on the roofs and that sort of stuff, they'll start increasing in numbers as well. Okay, that's a good spot, so let's see what else. Because years ago you'd come down here and you wouldn't really get that many, but as soon as they stop netting them commercially, the numbers are starting to pick up, especially on the south coast. But the hard thing is just reading the water and picking where to cast, you know? So I'm a little bit off on that cast. I should have gone a bit more to the left. You can just tell by looking at the water. So this is all weed that we've got now. So that real straining is not a fish, it's weed. Wish it was a fish, you know? Once the actual summer hits properly uh, what will happen is um, we'll have a lot of juvenile Australian salmon coming into this uh, inlet and waterway and they provide fantastic sport on light tackle um, they're not a very nice tasting fish so luckily a lot of people let them go let's go straight out again now that's the furthest cast we've done all day and it's right in the main flow of this current. So hopefully these four to like these two two ounce sinkers can bury in the bottom and then hold bottom, but I don't think so. Yeah, it looks like it's starting to eddy around here. So we might have to just fish a bit more on the left. That's not a bite on the line. That's just weed clamping up around the sinker and that you can, mind you, that was a bump. No. Yeah, more weed, that's right. What I'm gonna do is a really short cast. Actually, no. Hang on, I've just noticed a change in the water over the top there. Actually, we could have had a bite then. Sometimes the whiting will hide in the weed They'll come out and feed and try and dive back in. Hello, Max. How are you, bud? Yeah, we've had a few herring. I think we've caught four herring so far, which is better than not catching anything. But as I said, we're going to um, fish here, and then I've brought the 12-foot uh, beach rod. We'll go and do some long-range casting for fish around a reef. So basically, it's the same thing as we were doing yesterday for the brim, but on a bigger scale. You can see the reefs out from the shore. You want to cast within three or four feet from the reef. You'd be amazed what you can catch in shallow water here, fishing the edge of reefs. And it's quite, some, I've seen 15 kilo snapper come out of here, you know, but not this time of year. So just going to cast to the left again. Right. Let's see if there's anything down there. Just nice to be out. Come on. Now that was a good little hit. That felt a little bit bigger, I think, but we'll just have a look. So yeah, I can see what's happening. I'll show you what I mean about the water. When you've got salt meeting fresh, you'll always have a seam of water and like weed will build up along it. All right. Uh, in Western Australia, herring are affectionately known as hezes. Right. So, like I said, they're quite a feisty little fish. That's an that's an absolutely perfect live bait size, but we're not going to worry about that. Um, I prefer to leave them swimming, so.
hopefully they come back next year twice as big, you know. All right, now I'll show you what I mean about this water fermo. Check this out. So just over here on the left-hand side, right, see how we have this water that's rippling? Okay, so what'll happen is, you can see a clear line through here like that. This is salt on this side. The salt's going around the back there because it's so clean and clear. And if you see further down, you see all these ripples and that sort of stuff. That's like a little bit of an eddy. I was just casting to the left here. So here, I'll show you what I mean. What I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and plonk a cast right here on this point, okay? Where this seam of the water is, I'll show you. So I just wanna cast out here and just around that water. Just like that, okay? So now this is all salt in here. I don't think there's any weed in here. Let's just see if there's any fish in there. This is really good now, okay? This is really good. Got plenty of salt water in here. The weed's starting to move down. And what'll happen is, when the tide changes, this salt will retract back into the ocean and then the murky water from the fresh water will come in and this will go back to being a really uh, uh, sort of dark stain tea colour, you know. Right, now, no fish on there, just a bit of weed. So what I need to do is I need to cast over this, over on the seam. So I'm just going to go to the left a little bit more. Just in there, right, boom. That might not be far enough because this water's changed again with the current bringing in the salt from the ocean. The other thing that can have happened too is there could be something that's sort of come into the area. You know what I'm saying? Now that's interesting. We've just caught herring and it's gone quiet and we're not even getting the herring now. So either some tailor have come in or some juvenile Australian salmon and herring's their favorite food, obviously. Oh, this is magnificent. I feel like going for a swim. The only problem is if I did that, I don't think the tide would want to come in, you know? So. All right. So that's not too bad. That's coming in reasonably clear now. Good. So in about the next half hour, we should get some good action. Right, that's the cast. I knew I should have brought the 10 footer down, you know. All right, let's see. Gonna just drop the rod tip here. Right. Just excuse me for a second. I'm just gonna put a cover on the phone so it doesn't overheat. Hang on, that's too much of a cover, really. Sorry about that, fam, hang on. Nope, that's not working, is it? Oh dear. Well, I'll have to design a streaming box, I think. Okay, so. All I caught there was weed, but at least we're figuring it out, you know. Catch him barehanded, yeah, I'll be right. <laughs> We've caught four, Terry, tell ya. The boys are gonna give you a hard time about that, you know. All the old jokes will start coming out, then they get sent to their room, you know what I mean? <sighs> Gotta be careful, Terry. It's a vicious cycle.
<laughs> That's because one of the boys said, Mom, it's five. Oh, shit, don't tell him. You know. I'm just hoping our phone doesn't overheat FAMO, that's my only concern. I might have to put the hat out and put the yellow beanie on, that would be totally embarrassing, but I'm sure you can get over it. Oh, let's go in here. Let's do a nice short cast in here and see if there's anything short in here. There's a big, big bank, there's a big bank of weed right here, right, and here looks fairly clear, so let's just see what's around. Oh, we should have some more cloud cover, good. Nah, more weed, bugger. We might have to shift, I think. We'll just give it another half hour and see what's happening, you know. Oh, there's not too much weed. Right here, let's shift this back now. Okay, let's bring this in, whoops, here. And thanks people, 19 watching, that's really good of you. When you've got a high tide coming into a river system like this, the water's continually changing. You've just got to keep watching it and monitoring it and figuring out where the fish are. And there's certain indicators that you can pick up. So if I pan to the left now, and it's only been five or 10 minutes, right, this whole waterway would be different again, you know? I'm surprised that big mulloway don't come in here chasing the herring. But anyway, stranger things have happened. Might rip out the soft plastics too and see if there's something belting around, you know. No, so what's happened now is we've got um, we've got just a lot of weed out there in the middle. Right. Night time's good here for garfish and that sort of stuff. So And the thing is, if you leave your rig out there with the weed on it, you're not going to catch anything, so you may as well bring it in and cast it out again. Okay, so where are we going to cast so there's no weed? And what'll happen is your weed sort of hits your fishing line, slides down, hits your swivel and stops, you know? Oh, does he? <laughs> it's all right, we'll sort it out, James, when we get partnered. Ah, oh, dear. Okay. I can actually get to the other side there by car, but it'll be a 45 minute drive. But in saying that, I'm seriously thinking about it because that little beach there that no one really fishes, I can cast into here and get King George and Yellowfin. But uh, I should have brought the kayak. So we've got more weed now, fam. I think we might even have to go and start the rock fishing a bit sooner, you know? I can't figure this out. I'm casting to spots that I don't think, you know, are the seam and that sort of stuff. And we're still getting weed on our rigs and line and, you know. Let's see if we do a little short range one in here. Because if they're fish there, they usually hit as soon as your sinker hits the bottom.
and the good thing about fishing off the rocks over here oh there we go so they are in closer you knew it um, you can actually the reef stop the um, like weed coming in Oh, it got off. Excellent. I dropped the rod tip there and the little herring got off, which is good. I was going to let it go anyway. So you can add another one to the count, Terry. All right. So what's happened is, that means the water's come in. Yeah, they are in closer, fam. Excellent. Yeah, this tide's starting to come in. I'm going to have to shift everything back. All right, uh, there's another one. I've got about seven people on my right-hand side fishing, so I think they're going to start coming down if they do. All right, another herring, famo. Hey, all right. Seven. Let's bring this back here. Okay. Uh, right. Chuck that in there. What? Okay, so now we have a heap of tide coming in, fam, which is good. See how this water's swirling in front of us? and it's trying to climb up the bank, that's exactly what we want. Okay? So, that's exactly what we want. Okay. That might be a little bit to the left, actually. And when you're fishing a tidal river like this, casting here you'll get fish and casting there you might not. So let's have a look. There we are. I've just cast about eight feet to the right of where I cast last and I'm getting bites straight away. Rightio, we must have lost our bait. Let's see how we go. No, we didn't. Interesting. So for a fish to bite then disappear, there could be something that's coming after it. If we do see any big tailor or any juvenile salmon in that, it'll be in the next half hour to hour because we've got enough water for this to come in. And then what I'll do is I'll rip out the soft plastics and we'll just have a bit of fun with them, you know. Hopefully we get to see some of the big stingrays that come in out of the ocean. There's stingrays that swim around in here that are five feet between the tips on the wings, you know, so. Now that's a good bite. There we go. That's a really good bite. Let's have a look. I won't drop the rod tip this time. Okay. I'll bring that in. There we are. I didn't drop the rod tip to drop it that time. Oh, sorry little fella. Come here. There you go. All right, they're tiny. Night, culpable. Thanks for coming in, mate. 
All right. So once again, with this tidal, uh, or with these uh, water coming in from the ocean, it's changed the uh, composition of this area. So now it's all salt, okay? And uh, hopefully, like I said, we've got bigger fish coming in and chasing the herring. And what I'll do is I'll just put on a couple of little uh, soft plackies. Be nice to get a little juvenile Australian salmon. All right, and we go again. Just gonna move around to the left a bit and see if there's anything in here. This has cleared right up though. I cast about 10 feet to the left of where I last cast. We didn't even get a bite. So obviously the flow is over here. Like that, let's see if there's one in there. Now, that was a little bit bigger, fam. Did you see the uh, take then? Right, so as you can see, where you cast is important. This might be a little bit bigger herring or it's two of them. Let's have a look. Yep. Just a slightly bigger herring, see? See you, bud. So, we've figured out where it is. Will Gadamas, how are you, bud? No, nah, never gave me the flick, mate. Not at all. It's called work and being an adult, Will. <laughs> I hate it. No, I'm kidding. Rightio, so what we're going to do now is... Right, now, so like I said to you, there's no point casting to the left here. We're not getting anything. Oh, see in there? See that swirl? If you just look in here, right, you'll see a little swirl in the water there. Right, see that little swirl there? That's a little eddy. So there could be fish swimming around in there, so watch. Uh. Right, so I'm right on the swirl there, on the edge of it. We'll probably get one on the bottom hook. There we go, that was a bite. That was a good bite too. All right, I think we have got it on there. Let's have a look. Or haven't we? No. It's the same old story. Whenever you go fishing, always make a note of what the conditions are and what the water's doing, right? So the water usually gives you the indications of what's going on underneath it. So just in here, watch. Okay, just in there. Right, boom. That's gonna hit on the bottom. I'm going to drop my rod tip right down. Just watch in there. Okay, so it's changed again because if there was a fish there, it would have hit by now. Or like I said, there could be a larger fish that's coming through, see? But it, oh, there it is, there's the bite, I missed it. <laughs> Whoops.
we must have lost our bait, so let's bring it back in. Now, I've actually bought a bit of ox heart with me today, right? And uh, with the ox heart, herring love it. And so do whiting and other fish, believe it or not. So I'll just use a bit more um, eddy. <laughs> That's the ox heart there. I'll bring that out in a minute. Now, ox heart's a beautiful bait because it's got a lot of blood in it and it's actually a very, very um, tough meat. And once it gets wet though, like most things, it starts to swell a bit. But if you've got herring in the area, it's a safe bet you'll catch them on ox heart, you know? Yeah, there's a big flathead that's come in, fam. So what I'll do is, uh, yeah, I fish, catch and release anyway, mate, so. <laughs> All right, so there's a big flathead that's coming in, fam. So what we might do is. And see what I mean? Like the, the tide's starting to come in and all the fish are coming in out of the ocean. So the flathead's hanging around the edge. I've just done a very close cast here. If we do get it, I'll just let it go. Was it a big one? Was it a big? Oh yeah. I'll get the soft plastics out in a minute, okay? As soon as we see a tailor or a little juvenile salmon come in, we'll cast this out and leave it. All right. Flathead are one of the few fish that are very susceptible to lures. So whether it's soft plastics or slices or whatever, you will get them. And like I said, the herring come in, the whiting come in, the flathead will chase them, then the salmon will come in, the tailor. Just got to stick it out, you know? All right. There won't be just one flathead that's coming in. There's going to be heaps, fam. Now, we have got a little fish on here. I think it's another herring. Hey. Here we go. All right. Oops. Sorry, mate. Come on. Let's put another little bit of bait on. No, we don't, Alex. We don't have as many flathead here as they do on the eastern states, unfortunately, mate. Um, I mean, we have blue spot, blue, blue spot. We have blue spot flathead that can grow to about 1.1 meters, okay. But um, we don't have the dusky flathead that you have over there. Much to my bitter disappointment. I'll rig up for the soft plastics in a second. Let's go. 
go. Now, um, what we'll do, okay? Oh, they do have bag limits, but in WA they've introduced combined bag limits, Alex. Okay, so something's um, happened. The herring have gone quiet, so I'm thinking that some larger fish have come in. So what we'll do, let's change to some um, soft plastics. Right, I've got a few little soft plastics in there with quarter ounce heads. We'll see if we can get something. Right, I have got one bait left on here. Let me just cast it out. Let's try a bit further over. So as you can see, the water's continually changing all the time. Right, you just got to figure out where the fish are. So. Right, so all the small stuff's gone off the bite now, right? So with that off the bite, um, what we'll do is let's put out some soft plastics, right, and see if there's anything out there. I need to charge this phone. Three percent. Let's get this up here. Right, that's charging nice. Okay, Pam. So what we're going to do is put on a soft plastic net. Oh, what did I get? Oops. What have we got here? Excellent. That's what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some um, the old scrounger type tails on just a quarter ounce head, okay? So we'll just get that set up. And we might get some juvenile Australian salmon. We might even get that flathead that swam past. Just give me a second off camera here to get this sorted. Come on, phone. Right. Now, what do we got here? Actually, you know what I might do? I might use the old-fashioned rig, I think, fam. That's a good idea. Let's use the old-fashioned rig.
when I say old fashioned rig, like pre-snap swivels, what you'd do is you'd have a swivel and you'd have a length of line, right? So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do a loop system on here, right? Oh really, come on. We'll get a quarter ounce um, head on here, like so. That's about the smallest size head that you'd want to use on this rod with this reel. All right. So what we're going to do is fish this with a loop. We're not going to clamp down the line on it tight. So when you fish with a loop, it's really quite simple. It's, this is the easiest way I've found to do a loop. You put the line through the eye and just do a little like granny knot in here right around the loop like that okay see that there that's going to be your stopper okay and then one two oops one two three four five six seven like that bring that through the first um like little loop you've done there have i done it no, the eye side's going Right, bring that through here. Don't be doing that. Come back through here, thank you. It's in here. Oops, dropped me plastics. Great. Oh, so it didn't hold anyway. Right, so what we have is we have a little loop, so it gives the reel a bit of action, not that it's a very good one. Okay, so let's uh, Okay, so now what we're going to do is, when you do this, you've got to pick. Okay, so we're just going to put that through there. All right, get that point just where the tail's joining the body. Bring that in like that. Okay, and that's actually a pretty good little grub bait. Let's see what's out there, fam. We'll muck around with soft plastics for a little while. So with soft plastics, you just retrieve them slow enough so the tail starts wiggling, okay? And there is a flathead in the area, so if there is one, hopefully we'll find it, you know? And you want to retrieve it so it just stays off the bottom as well. Nice. So for those fish to go off the bite, um, who knows what else is out there, you know? Let's just get that little bit of weed off there, shall we? <laughs> Starting to heat heat up, it's gonna become a nice clear day. You wanna try and make it look as natural as possible. So the last thing you want is a bit of weed hanging off it.
doesn't hurt to get the odd soft plastics going for later on today, you know. That was a good hit. I have no idea what that was. That was a very good hit. Yeah, okay, hang on. Huh. When you're fishing with braid, if you point your rod tip at the water, your soft plastic and your jig head will come along the bottom and retrieve along the bottom. If you lift your rod tip up, it'll bring it up into mid-water in the surface. See how it's come up to the surface now? All right. We're just starting to get some of those howling northwesterlies in, so we might have to move in a minute. Let's bring that in there. At least we've managed to turn it into a good little day, you know, Femma. Let me just check how this swims. Okay. I'm actually retrieving that a little bit too slow, so... Let's, uh, let's bring that in a little bit quicker so it just stays off the bottom a bit. Right. Much better. That's at that position with the rod and that retrieval that's staying about four inches off the bottom, which is spot on. Yeah, this wind's starting to pick up. We might have to head inland, fam. Woo, it's howling. I've fished in worse. No, no fish at all, mate. Nope. How about down there? Did you get any? No, we were going to go out that way, but the road's all blocked off. Oh, yeah, you can still get out there, though. you just got to fish around that um, boat harbour. Yeah. So. Oh, we haven't got a line yet. Oh, yeah. It's always more chance of getting a fish with one in the water. <laughs> Now, according to Murphy's Law, they will cast first cast and catch that flathead that was here. you'd think it's the holidays. Hey Manzi. <laughs> How are you Manzi? Alright, so while these guys are around I'm going to be using soft plastics and hope that I don't catch a thing. Alright. No, I need to actually go a little bit quicker. Got to just change the rod position now. Let's go a little bit more like 30 degrees 
so I think that's probably a bit better. Now we're getting some action. Beautiful. This is more of a brim colour, but I didn't bring the other soft plastic, so... So, what do you think I should do? Do you think I should stir them up and go back to bait or what? All right, so there's no juvenile salmon in here, which is interesting. Because sometimes you do get them, but admittedly a little bit later. So, I should have brought down one of the silver soft plastics. Now, we've caught fish this morning. Uh, when I first got here, there was about 12 people further down. They've all left. It's still not the right time yet, so. See, that's not out of the right spot, hang on. Let me just fix this. That's better. Now it might actually swim, Famo. I'm tempted to stir. Oh, I'm tempted to stir. Alright, so the cormorants have started coming in, so there are fish in here, if the cormorants are around. Okay. Vault, how are you mate? Yeah, that's not good. All right. 
Well, at least we've got the rig sorted out for when we go brim fishing later, you know. Now people, um, these guys are here a little bit too close for comfort. So what we'll do is we're gonna move down in a minute, right? And if they follow me down to the other spot, then I'm gonna have a word to them. These soft plastics aren't working, so I might go to a metal slice lure. Excellent. They've had four casts, not caught anything, so they've moved on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep mucking around with soft plastics till they move on, and then I'll rip the baits out again. I think I might get the uh, little white baits out and see if we can get that flathead. I think I've just seen that flathead then. I think it's just in here. I'm just going to bring this in along the bottom. Nope. Oops. What's the time? Nine o'clock in the morning and they're already drinking beer. Really? JDF Saints, how are you mate? Welcome to the stream. Oh, 20 to 11, I suppose it's not as bad. The Josh Life, how are you buddy? 
How are you, mate? Welcome to the stream. From Canada, JDF Saints, welcome, bud. Sorry about that, people. I just had um, some people that, uh, you know, virtually tried to walk all over the top of me. Right. So, we have lots of good people in our community from all over the world. Canada, America, the UK. Welcome, everyone. All right, so what I'm going to do is... I'm not going to say it in the Australian dialect, but I'll abbreviate it for you. I'm going to wait for these two geezers to F off, then as soon as they F off, then they go back to using bait, and hopefully things will get back to normal. You know, seriously, like, <laughs> you didn't see it. He was just on the edge of the camera, like 10 feet from me, and nearly starting to cast over my line. So I gave him a bit of a glare and they moved down, you know. Some people would do anything for a fish. Okay, now, I just had a sh shape in the water follow the um, soft plastic, so I'm guessing that's the flathead, right? So... I'm going to slow the retrieve right down and bring it in right along the bottom. Come on. But this is nearly prime time here. Tide's starting to really come in, which is good. And sorry about not acknowledging chat. And JDF Saints and the Josh Life Really sorry about not acknowledging chat. I was just uh, trying to concentrate on the fishing. Alright, what I'm going to do, fam, is I'm going to change to a lure known as a metal slice. We'll see if we can catch some herring or catch some tailor on it. Just going to put a slightly longer leader on it. And what the um, metal slice looks like, metal slice is exactly that. They have metal that's offset. They cut it at an angle. They put a hook on one end and a swivel on the other. And what they try and do is they just try and emulate a fleeing bait fish. So that's what we're going to use now. Yeah, the water is beautiful, isn't it, fam? You know, Australia has some of the most pristine beaches in the world and estuaries and inlets, and it's still so relatively free. If you're anywhere else in the world, you'd have to apply for a licence to come out here or a permit and that sort of stuff. In Australia, you can just rock up, but that's going to change eventually, you know. Nothing stays constant, that's for sure. All right, people, so see what we've got here? These beautiful little metal slices. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to use the one that has a bit of a gold tinge. Okay, we've got one here that's got a little bit of a gold tinge. Right, let's see if that works. Uh, 
and then I think we might have to shift anyway so we'll see how that goes So this is quite simple, we're just going to cast this out and retrieve it, that's all. Herring and tailor and Australian salmon love these lures. happen is um, that'll just twist and move while you're retrieving it it'll just glisten in the sun and hopefully the fish will go in and eat it <laughs> I want to bring it in just underneath the surface and the other thing with this is too um, we shouldn't encounter any weed if you know what I mean And it's quite funny, you'll see the fish swimming behind it. And that's casting as far as the four ounce sinker. That's a good long cast, I'm just going to let it sink a bit. What I'm doing there is called a pendulum cast. I'm dragging the lure behind me, behind me, waiting for it to turn over, then forward casting. All that does is it increases your line speed. When it increases your line speed, oh, there we go, we just had a little hit. Come on, little buddy. That was, here we go, come on, little herring. Yes, I think we're on. Oh, I didn't hook up. Bugger. All right, so we know where they are. It tried to eat it. <laughs> Let's go again. So, while I've got this lure moving, right, I control what the lure's doing, see? So I can control it, right? Okay, and all I'm doing is I'm increasing the line speed through the increased resistance on the lure. So when I go to cast, I can cast further with um, the same amount of effort. Watch. See? And that's how you can sort of get a little bit more distance with your lures and sometimes the distance makes all the difference. I'll move it a little bit quicker so hopefully the herring hit it. I'm just surprised there's no juvenile Australian salmon in here, you know. But we'll flick these around the rocks later and you'll be surprised what'll hit them. Yeah, that's where we cast last time, so we should get a herring. Let's bring it in. I'll retrieve it a little bit quicker, so that way if they hit it, they should hook up. But as you can see, this water's a beautiful turquoise blue. This is all salt because the high tides come in. Oh, hello. <laughs> Our little mate, the flathead, was underneath that lure then. I'm going to let this sink a little bit more before I retrieve it. That's a beautiful long cast. See how far out it went? Uh, 
Okay. If there are some tailor around the rocks and that today, we should get some. So, hopefully. The good thing about lure fishing, it keeps you busy, you know. Bait fishing can get a bit boring after a while. Oh, that's not good. I just felt a little knot then. So maybe that swivel's not working as well as it should be. Line roll is good. Tell you what, I have noticed a big drop in quality of terminal tackle over the years. Um, years ago you'd never have issues like this I mean look at that you know I've got a beautiful little swivel on there and it's not even doing the job come on I don't want to lose all this line you know oh. Whew. luckily braid doesn't have that much stretch so you can usually get it all out you know I'll just cast with a slightly smoother action, righto. So rod tip down, I'm gonna bring this in along the bottom and see if there's any. All right, so that was a hit. It just felt like a little herring had hit it or something. But there's nothing big out there, fam, which is a surprise. Okay, we're going to swap the yellow one out in a minute and probably go to the one that's got the power shell colour on it. I'll just check chat in a second, fam. We might have to move to a sheltered area. So let's see how we go. And hopefully that pelican doesn't come up again from yesterday, remember? T done, how are you mate? Ooh, nearly fell over. As you can see we're casting quite a good distance without doing much of a um, back cast and it's just a really easy way to fish with lures. Now, I'm going to do a really old tactic. I'm going to cast this out. I'm going to let this lure, uh, the lure sink right to the bottom. Watch. Right, I'm not going to close my bail arm just yet. Now I'll do it and I'll drop my rod tip. The line's gone loose. Right, that should be on the bottom. Sometimes fish will wait till it hits the bottom, then hit it as you retrieve it. Watch. That's actually a really good way to catch mackerel and that sort of stuff up north. Now we just vary the retrieve and see if this works. That was another, so that's a really good distance to cast with like a little six foot rod and 20 pound braid. That's plenty, you know what I mean? I've had a few hits, but it's just obviously smaller fish. They're still out there though, which is good. Uh, these old boys that have rocked up next to me are starting to crack the shit, so once they go, I'll use bait again. And uh, what I will do though, 
I'll show you another technique today. I'm going to show you how to bait a West Australian white bait and cast it like a lure, like this. Okay, I'll show you. Now we've still got everything there. All right, excellent. Let's have a couple more casts. These guys are getting really shitty, which is good. And I'm going to call it, right, we should be able to catch that flathead on a white bait being cast like a lure. I'll show you what I mean by that, okay? So if you're thinking about getting into lure fishing and that sort of stuff, right, what you can do is cast the baits around to get a feel for it and then graduate to a lure and just work from there. So let's bring that in. Rightio, one more. Oh, what happened there? The other thing is too, leave your lure rigged up because if a big school of tailor come through or a big school of herring, of the bigger herring, because herring can grow up to 40 centimetres, you know, like a small salmon, or you get some juvenile salmon, you just put your bait rod down, cast your lure out and you're away again, you know. When you, um, when you, cast her uh, when you cast white bait on a set of gangs with a little bean sinker or ball sinker, it literally is a fisher cast if they're around, you know? Right. Alright, they're starting to do the hands on hips, they're shaking their heads, give it five or ten minutes, Famo. We'll just muck around like this and catch nothing. I'll wait till they move and then... The thing is too, with this west northwesterly, my lure's going out here and my line's are billowing out towards the ocean. So when you retrieve it, it'll come in on an arc anyway. So. Okay. Beautiful long cast. Whoops. All right, Famo, let me show you how to set up these rigs. <laughs> Pimmy Basher, how are you, bud? Welcome. How you doing? Yeah, that's why you need good quality swivels and you need really good quality um, uh, line too. Uh, the swivels, like I'm using a lot smaller swivels than are required for the line class and they're just not as good as they used to be, you know?
cormorants. I hate those things. Yeah, it's starting to get a bit crowded this place, isn't it? I don't like that. We might have to move a bit further upstream, I think. All right. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stir these two old blocks, blokes up next to me. All right. So what I'll do is I'll cast this smelly prawn bait out that's dried up, but we'll still get a fish on it. All right. We'll hook one fish and then we'll move just for a shit stir. the one when I cast there with the lure there was herring so we should get one on this bottom hook I bought two shirts the other day and doubled my wardrobe it's great That looks like the spot. Let's have a look. The water's changed again, so you just gotta read it, you know? There's that bite, come on. After a while, you pick up and know what to look for, so. That's not good. Get out of there. Uh, the lure weighs 10 grams, which is just under half an ounce. That was a much better cast, but the bait fell off. Let's bring that in. Okay fam, well look, um, we've been going for a couple of hours now. Uh, what I've got to do is I've got to carry this um, all back to the car. 
So uh, what we'll do, okay, I'm gonna go to another spot and set up the same one that we went to yesterday. And we'll go and start using a few slices and a few soft plastics and all that sort of stuff. And then after that, um, or in between that, I'm just gonna go and get some water and that sort of stuff and refresh. So look, uh, please stick around, okay. Hey Jason, how are you mate? Welcome to the stream. Yeah it is mate, this is a beautiful part of the world. Okay, unfortunately I've got about, what, I'd say, oh there's about 10 people walking over this way with fishing rods, so I really don't like being around too many people when I'm fishing, it's just a personal thing, you know. I don't intrude upon their space, but unfortunately a lot of people don't think like that. So look, uh, what we'll do, okay, um, we'll move to another spot and that avoids the conflict and there's uh, quite a few people running around families and that and I don't want to have any like you know juveniles run across the um, screen while we're streaming because you can sort of you know, get banned for that so, sorry, we'll, so turn your notifications on I'll be live in half an hour we'll set up at the next spot for a couple of hours and then we'll just fish for there and then what we'll do is we'll just wait for the tide to change We'll head back out here and start fishing along the reefs here or if the weather sort of drops off a bit with in terms of the wind what we'll do is we'll just go and head out there but i'll be live again in about half an hour i've just got to take all this to the car go to the toilet set up again and we're away all right so turn your notifications on and i'll see you in about 30 minutes catch ya that would be a lovely screenshot wouldn't it <laughs> 